say good evening to everyone. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Eternal God, our Father, the Father of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, we come once again thanking you. Thank you, Lord, for one more opportunity that you allowed us to assemble ourselves at the house of worship. One more opportunity we can come down to further study from thy holy word. Father, I pray that thou would have thy Holy Spirit to come in and remove me, take control, speak through me, dear Master. Then open the students' understanding to help us to receive thy word. Then, Lord, we thank you for those that are present. We thank you for those that are online. Help us tonight, dear Master, to get a true understanding of your holy word because, Lord, we realize that the time that we're living in is darker days than we ever witnessed in this world we're living in. Yes, yes. And you declared unto us that we are the light of the world. Help us, Lord, to let our light so shine that men may see your good works, yes. that we will glorify your name in all that we do. Never looking for no praises for ourselves, but glorify you, give all the praise to where it belongs, to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, leading the laws unto thee. This is our will, and we ask it in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, and we thank you. Amen. I want to say good evening to everyone. Uh, those that are present, uh, those also that are online. And I want to, I'm going to be very brief with this uh, because we had someone ask two questions uh, online last week. Uh, and I want to give, an, give my answer to them. And they was wanting to find out is there any Bible scripture tells us where Mount Transfiguration is? Is there a name for where that place actually was? And if you notice in our commentary that we have, our Sunday school illuminated that we have, if you go back to last week and look at the subject, right under the subject, it said possible near my home. And if the commentaries say this, and once we tried to get some information on this, uh, we went online and everything, and we find out that there are a lot of people that are trying to find out where is Mount Transfiguration. Uh, matter of fact, uh, here one of my preachers coming in right now, he and I looked it up, and there is nothing scripted where you could be dogmatic about where it took place. Now, but some scriptures did say that there are several mountains in this area, and this Mount Hermon is the highest. So I'm going to say, uh, speaking, and I did take some uh, theology, and I'm going to say it, not being dogmatic about it, is that I believe that this is the place where it really happened. Mount Hermon, because there is a Mount Hermon. And, we built, and I believe that's the place where it actually took place. And we even went back and looked at uh, Calvary, uh, Sinai, and all these other places. And nothing in the Bible relates them directly to this Mount Transfiguration. And then there was a second question was asked online about when Jesus come down, was the people run to him because he was shining? And there's no scripture actually it's specific about that. But I do not believe he was shining. And the reason I do not believe he was shining uh, because Jesus charged these men that was up there with him. He charged them. If you go back and look in uh, Mark 9 through probably verse 7 verse, Jesus charged them that they should tell no man what thing they had seen until he be risen from the dead. Now, God wanted Peter, James, and John to know who Jesus was is because they were the inner circle. Yeah. And he wanted those three to know for sure who he was, and that's why he took them up there. Uh, so uh, uh, it's, it, there are a lot of things in the Bible that we do not fully understand. But those are two questions was asked on last week, and that's the best I can give you on those. But for us, something dogmatic. There's no scripture. And I, like I said, we look 
And then I went and I talked to some some senior ministers, pastors, been around a long time, and they said that they have no knowledge of this. But but one of them shared with me which was really important about Mount Transfiguration is when when God had Peter, James, and John up there with his son, that a voice rang out, said, this is my son, beloved son, who, in whom I'm well pleased. And what's so important to them was, hear ye him. And that's the most important thing about what happened upon Mount Transfiguration, is for those three to make sure that they know who he is. And not only know who he is, hear him. So we're going to go ahead and get started in our lesson on this week, which is dealing with he healing on the Sabbath. And, and this is a very good lesson, y'all. Uh, I find a lot of very helpful things uh, dealing with this lesson can be helpful uh, to us. Uh, uh, and Luke 1, 6 and 1 say, and it came to pass on the second Sabbath. Uh, after the first, uh, that he went through the cornfield and the disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hand. Uh, and this second Sabbath is just like the day we got first, second, third, fourth month. I mean, fourth weeks. And this was just the second Sabbath. Now, and, and again, since we have a question, and I know some people, still are concerned uh, about the Sabbath. Now, in this particular time, when this took place, it was dealing with the Jewish Sabbath day, which was on uh, Saturday, which is the last day. When you uh, look at the calendar, how the calendar is set up, uh, uh, Sunday is the first day. Uh, and, and, and this is the Jewish Sabbath would be the second Saturday in that month. When they went through the cornfield and his disciples plucked the ear of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hand. But what I really want somebody to do before we get into this is somebody go to Matthew 12 and 1. And let's read Matthew 12 and 1. This is Luke version of what took place here. So let's run over to Matthew 12 and 1 because there's uh, one word in there I want to, uh, uh, it's going to help us to understand what's going on here. At the time Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, his disciples were hungry and they began to pluck heads of grain and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said to him, look, your disciples are doing what is not lawful to do on the Sabbath. Okay. He said to them, have you not read what David did when he was hungry and those who were with him, how he entered the house of God and ate the bread of the presence, okay. which it was not lawful for him to eat, Amen. nor that for those who were with him, but only for the priests. Okay. Notice two times it mentioned the fact that they were Hungry. hungry. Notice in our scripture, it does not say anything about they were hungry. And I wanted to bring that in, uh, the fact that they were, was hungry. And the fact that they was hungry, and they was in this cornfield, and some of them are going to say it's grain and wheat. Um, the scripture said corn. Uh, uh, so we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. But the thing that we want to, that I want to say about this, Matthew said that they were hungry, and the fact that they was hungry, this is why they plucked a, a ear of corn to eat the corn, simply because they were hungry. And, and then let's go to two. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do you that? Why do you that which is not lawful? to do on the Sabbath day. Now, somebody go and find uh, Exodus 28 through 10. 28 
28 through 10. 28 through 10. Chapter 8? Yeah. This is chapter 20, verses 8? Yeah, chapter 20, verses 8 through verse 10. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. <laughs> Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do. You shall not do any work, you or your son or your daughter. Your male or your male female servant or your cattle or your sojourner who stays with you. That was 8 through 10. Okay. Notice what he just, do you see the word in that, labor? You shall do no. You shall do no labor. You shall do no work. Right. Now, going back, looking up here, was they working? No. Mm -hmm. What were they doing? Hungry. They hungry mm -hmm. and got them an ear of corn. Now, do you put that in the category of working? No. So look at these Pharisees. They have their own law. Now, if you want to buy by God's law, it said don't labor. And the men were not laboring. They were just hungry. And when you hungry, you're going to get something to eat. Now, uh, uh, and also, somebody ran over to do the Roman. Because now, they supposed, to be, they supposed to be upholding the law. These are the, the experts on the law. And they're supposed to be making sure that the law is carried out. Now, we just found out that they wasn't laboring. No. So they, were, they, had, they had added on to the law. Now, go to uh, Deuteronomy uh, 23 and 25. Deuteronomy 23 and 25. When thou comest and do thou standing, corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ear. With thy hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. So the law said that if you can go to another man's field, mm -hmm. you can pluck your ear of corn. Mm -hmm. And you can eat it, but you can't take it and take it somewhere else. You can't put it in no bag, you can, but if you want to pluck your ear of corn. Now, I don't know about you all if you're you raised up in the city, but I'm a country boy. Yeah. And when we was coming up, Deacon Preston, we used to hunt. You could hunt on anybody's property. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but now things have changed. Yeah, uh, but, but even here, if you went on somebody else's property and they had some corn out there and you was hungry, mm -hmm. the law says, you just read it, that it's okay to pluck an ear and this is how Jesus and his disciples was doing. And look at these, how these Pharisees are responding. And all they did was Jesus obeyed the law. Do you know why come Jesus obeyed the law so well? Because he is the law. <laughs> so if he is the law, he's not going to break the law. But, but, but these Pharisees, my brother, my sister, the one more scripture I want us to read. Read Exodus 31 and 13. Exodus 31 and 13. Thirty thirty one and thirteen. Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my verily my Sabbath ye shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout all generations, uh -huh. that ye may know that I am the Lord that do it sanctify you. Now the the keeping the Sabbath, the Saturday, that was for the nation of Israel. Right. And he was telling them that they should keep it on a Saturday. Now, if they're still doing that over in Israel, that's between them and God. Right. Now, what happened for the church is thing changed when Jesus came into 
into this world. All of the scriptures say it was on the first day of the week mm -hmm. that he rose early that morning. Something changed, y'all. It was a time and change. Jesus got up early Sunday morning. Now, since Jesus got up early Sunday morning, there was something else that happened. When Jesus got up early Sunday morning, the veil in the temple, was split from top to bottom. That meant that there is no veil, no more separated man from God. There is not just the priest can come to God, not anybody can come directly to God. And another thing, when Jesus got up that morning, early Sunday morning, that put an end to the dispensation of the law. And it was the beginning of what? Grace, Grace and mercy. mercy. Grace and mercy involved what? The church. It's the dispensation of the church. And we come together to worship. We come together to worship and thank God on the day that Jesus got up and that's what we call our Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Now, for whatever the Jews are doing, that's going to be between them and God. Mm -hmm. Because God told them through them and their generation. Uh, uh, and, and we know we still respect Israel and over there as being God's holy ground. But this is the dispensation of the church. Excuse me, but he said that it, that it became when, the, when Jesus rose Sunday, it came up. Dividing of what? The dispensation. Okay. It's the end of the law. Uh -huh. okay. See, they were under the law. Okay. Uh, but when Jesus, when that when that veil was rented, uh -huh. that ended the law. Okay. And under the law, could nobody go to God unless but the high priest one time a year. Uh -huh. Nobody, no, no one else could get to God. Yeah. And then they had to kill lambs, animals, yeah. and sprinkle their blood. We see that after Jesus shed his blood, you don't kill no more animals. Yeah. Uh, all this is over with. Yeah. Because now the blood that Jesus shed, there's no other blood that's acceptable unto God. You know. Yeah. Uh, so it ended that dispensation. That that people say God does not change. No, God never his God and his word never changed. But there was seven dispensations brought about changes. The first one was innocent, but man just didn't know any better. Right. Then you had conscience, but man know what's right and wrong. And then you had the government, mm -hmm. something to rule over him. And then you had the promise dealing with Abraham. And after that, you had the law. And now we're in the dispensation of grace. But let me tell y'all this, we are right at the end of the dispensation of grace, feeling what's going to happen during the uh, millennium period. And this is why come so many people don't want to have nothing to do with the church. And God won't get tired of this. So grace is the last dispensation. No, the millennium. Yeah, okay, after the grace is the, the millennium. And see, we right, we right at the end of this. At the, we, we're at the end of the grace period. Everybody is saying this. And you can feel it. And you can, you, you can see it even in uh, 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 2 Timothy chapter 3. The last days. Now, actually, the last day really started when Jesus, during Jesus' time on earth, that's considered the last day. But even at the end of the last days is when uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3 tells you how people are going to be acting. Because y'all know we that are here, here, I can look at everybody here. They know that what children are doing today, we would have got killed behind that. You couldn't talk back to your parents like this. You know, but but now if you do something to them children, if they if we do to our children what they did to us, what will happen to us? Yeah. No, the law will lock you up, and because the law is behind the children, now the children will do something to you. And the reason we it's so hard trying to raise your children up the way we would raise these children gonna feel like I'm the only one have to be like this, and the rest of the children we know. Don't. So we have to make sure that. We need help from God to help us to raise these children. 
We need help from God. And the time that we need help from God, we're not even coming to God to get this word from God to help us deal with these situations. Because not only that, when you get right with God and get the word in you, there's something else that's going to also come and help you. Because let me throw this in, Sister Lee. Also, when that, when that veil was rented and it, and it ended the dispensation of the law, then, and, and, and Jesus got ready to go back to heaven, then also the Holy Spirit come to be with us. Yeah. See, it was a lot went on then. Yeah. And you need to know all of this. Yeah. And we can't do anything on our own, but with that Holy Spirit helping with us, yeah. man, we can get the job done. Yeah. And we can help raise our children even when the law says you can't do this and you can't do that. Man, we, we, we caught almost like between what they said, a hard rock and a, a rock and a hard place. But through the Holy Spirit and studying God's word, we can get through this. And we can raise up a generation of children that won't be like the rest of the world. But it, we need them in Sunday school. And we don't have them in Sunday school. And that's why I mean, it ain't going to be long before God's going to get tired of this. And, and just rapture his church up out of here. <coughs> <laughs> like I'm telling y'all, it's some, it's some, this is a heavy lesson, you all. And, and, and so we got the innocence, the government, then the promise. Huh? The uh, seven. Uh, dispensation. Yep, yeah, dispensation. Yeah. Innocent, government, promise. Innocent. First one was innocent. Uh huh. Conscious. Okay. But man start knowing better. Yeah. Okay. See? And then you go to the government. Government. Yeah. And, and then he gives you the promise. promise. Okay. Yeah. And the then promise. the law. Okay. And now we are okay. in the dispensation of grace. Of grace. Okay. Yeah. And that's dealing with, with God's mercy mm -hmm. and his grace. Okay. And it's all surrounded by the church. We ought to be the example for the world. Right. Israel was supposed to be the example for the world. Now, and when I say supposed to be, I could really take that off. You know why? Because God got his glory through Israel. What do you mean he got his, even though as bad off as they were, when Pharaoh, when Moses went to Egypt, mm -hmm. starting with them three, well, we know about the plague, yeah. but even when he started with Pharaoh, put his snakes down. Yeah. How many did he have? Two. two. Was it two or three? Two. It was two. And then Moses put his rod down. What did it, what did happen? Ate <laughs> he ate up his snakes. Oh. Now, do you get uh, 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 Moses the glory for that? No, 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 no. Who you get the glory for? No, no, no. Those plagues. Did Moses put the plagues on them? No, no. Who put the plague on them? No, no. Who did put the tent plague on them? No. Who opened the Red Sea up for they to cross over on dry land? No. Now, did God get his glory? Yeah, he got his glory. And when they got ready to go back over there and, 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 and the spies dealing with Rahab, what did Rahab say? She know about the hour of God. Why? What did she hear about? What he did where? Red At the Red Sea. So God was getting his glory using them. Right? Yeah. And when they got over there and had no water, just Moses hit a dry rock and it turned the place into an oasis. Mm -hmm. God was getting his glory. Yeah, yeah. He used them to get his glory. He wanted to use us to get his glory. Mm -hmm. It's a dangerous thing when you start wanting glory for your own sake. Yeah. Because he's going to get his glory. Mm -hmm. And he's still blessing us right today, you all. Yes, yes, and we need to be more appreciative to God. That's why when we come in here for, for worship service, don't let nobody come in here and, and take your focus off of worshiping God. Right. I don't know about, about nobody else, Reverend Rick, but God been good to me, man. Oh, yeah. God been mighty, mighty good to me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And he done brought me not a mighty long way, but he done brought me what? All the way. All the way. Yes, yes, sir. Yes. Now, keep in mind, you all, these Pharisees had twisted the law. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something else. Uh, There's some things that's going on right now. 
uh, with our Baptist church. Our Baptist church has a lot of traditions that they were good traditions when we was, when we was coming up. But some of those traditions, they don't work anymore. And uh, how many was over there when, to, the, to that group church program? I, I want to just use one thing and I'm going to move on. Uh, I, I, I remember the time, Sister Risper, when if a, a young lady come to church and she wasn't dressed right, then they could spread something. They, they, they had some, some cloths and stuff. They, they, they would sit down and they would spread. Now, them, them young back, women back then, they didn't say anything. Right. Try it now. <laughs> oh, man. Did you see what they did? Oh, first of all, now the first thing you're going to do if you do it, that's the last time you're going to see them. Yeah. But something else might happen now. Yeah. You might get embarrassed in church. Yeah. It might, a scene might get started in church, or you might get jumped on. <laughs> So if this is happening now, we need to make some adjustments. Yes. Because the man said something that was real important. I know not, nobody won't like to hear this. He said that we can have women running up to the young ladies because their dresses are too short. This is what he was teaching us. And he said the same woman running up to a young woman telling them that your dress is too short. And he said their dress might be almost down under their ankle. And come to find out they got three different children by three different dads. So that's what he said. Look at yourself. Quit being so judgmental. And the number one thing that we want to do is get these people in there. He said, we're living in a time now where we can't change, but that something still can change them, and we need, we need to know what it is can change. Do anybody know what it is? The Word. Because we're living in terrible time, y'all. And if we don't make some adjustment, some of, our, some of those things that we were doing, we, we just have to leave those things alone. They're not going to work anymore. And we're going to find out we're going to be all here by ourselves. It's a different day. we got to make the change. God does not change. His word does not change. Uh, so my brother, now here these Pharisees are. Do you not know that there's still Phariseeism alive? Yeah. What were they doing? Following Jesus for what? Criticize. Criticize. Following Jesus for something. Criticized him and there was something else they were following him for. Trying to find a fault in him. Do you know that some people come to church on Sunday? They don't come to praise God. They come with binoculars on. Let's, let's, let's come to the reality. Phariseeism is still alive. And we're going to find out. Look, look how they had took the law and twisted it. And Jesus was here doing what the scripture said. If you want to eat some corn. Yeah. It's okay with it. Why? And that's the reason I had you to go back and read that first scripture. That, that uh, Matthew said because they were eating the corn because they were hungry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's the reason they were eating the corn because they didn't just say, oh, look at that corn over there. Let's go over there and get us a No, they was hungry. Mm -hmm. Uh. I'm going to lock my paper here. What about verse, verse, three. Verse, verse 3? Okay. Um, and Jesus answered them and said, Have ye not heard so much? You see how Jesus, because he knew all of that they're talking about. They, these are the experts mm -hmm. in the law. And Jesus is so calm. That's something else, y'all. It, it's called me. We so easy to feel threatened, and then our disposition changed. But look how calm Jesus is in verse three. And Jesus answered them and said, "Have you not heard so much? Read. Have you not read? Read, because what I just had y'all to read was written in the law. But they done twisted, changed the law. And this is what Jesus had to." Have. Jesus answered and said, have you not read so much as this? What David did when himself was in hungry? This is going back to the reason they did it. It's all centered around them being hungry. 
Do y'all know a, what a, 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 a hungry man is a dangerous man? Now, it's, now we sit up here and we're talking about I'm being hungry. We get hungry because we, if you're on your job and it's 12 o'clock, you get hungry. But you, that ain't hunger there. You ever been hungry with them big intestines tell them little I'm ready to eat you because I'm hungry? I need something in here? It's two things that you, the body has to have food and the body has to have water. Because if you don't put water in this body, you, you've seen the, 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 the Western pictures where they run out of water in the devil? What happened? He see a mirage. And he think he see some water that's not even no... That's because if you don't put in this body what it has to have, this body starts malfunctioning. Now, now, when he talked about what David had here, now when David and them had really got hungry because Saul had them on the run. Uh, 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 uh. This bread was bread for the high priest. Uh, only the high priest was supposed to eat this bread. So let's, let's run over to 1 Samuel. Uh, one, I hope I didn't get my, 21. Yeah, who would they say that? Go ahead, Preston. Oh, I don't have it. I don't even speak. <laughs> All right. Man, thank you, Preston. Yeah. yeah. Let's read it. No, Preston didn't have it. He just said it. Go ahead. First Samuel. First Samuel. This was our third Okay, now, good. Now four. What do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread. Go ahead, start at number one. Start at number one. Okay. Let, then, let, David, then David came to Nob to Ahimelech, the priest. Uh -huh. And Ahimelech came trembling to meet David and said to him, Why are you alone and no one with you? David said to Ahimelech, the priest, The king has commissioned me with a matter and has said to me, let no one know anything about the matter on which I am sending you and with which I have commissioned you. Okay. That now, part is a... Now, that part what David is saying right there, that's a lot. Right. Yeah, okay. Then keep, sure. keep going. Now, therefore, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever can be found. Yeah. The priest answered David and said, There is no ordinary bread on hand. No but idea. there is consecrated bread. Holy. Only the young men have kept themselves from women. Uh huh. David answered the priest and said to him, Surely women have been kept from us as, as previously when I set off, and the vessels of the young men were holy, though it was an ordinary journey. How much more then today will their vessels be holy? Okay. So the priest gave him consecrated bread, for there was no bread there but the bread of the present, which was removed from before the Lord, in order to put hot bread in his place when it was taken away. Okay. Now, David lied about why he was there. Correct. Now, it was the reason why David was lying, because David and those men were hungry. Mm -hmm. They were hungry because Saul had them mm -hmm. on the run. Right. But because of the situation that the priest asked him, he told the truth. Uh, when he said uh, 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 that we have been, the, these men have been three days. And he was, what he was actually saying, if you haven't had any kind of sexual contact, uh, then your body is holy. And you can receive it. Now, that was the truth because they had been running. But they was hungry and they needed something to eat. And the fact that they was hungry and they needed, and another thing, let me tell you, when they was on the run doing what? God's will. You understand? Now, since they were going to run during God's will, then God allowed them to eat this sacred bread. In other words, we can't never say what God will and will not do. You understand what I'm saying? And a lot of things is held holy and sacred to us according to about the circumstances. Now, he's not saying that we can just, like this table out here, uh, 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 don't anyone supposed to be touching the sacrament table unless you've been ordained. Now, what if we don't have nobody ordained here and we want to 
carry out the, I moved the table. God's not going to strike nobody down. When they, because what we have to learn about God is a just God. But sometimes, uh, like the little kids come up in the pulpit, man, there have been times when, when them Baptist church, boy, they were, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, it's like you almost lose your mind. You, you, you know? Now, surely we want to respect the pulpit. We want to do things. But you don't have to scare a child to death. Make him mess his clowns up the way we respond. You know, it, it, because we respond like we're in the old dispensation. Mm -hmm. If you went in the holiest of holy places, yeah. what would happen? Yeah. God would strike you down and kill. God ain't not going to. The pulpit to me is still a holy place. Mm -hmm. But if a kid or somebody does not know any better walk in there, God not going to strike them down. Mm -hmm. But a lot of time, the way we conduct ourselves. Yeah. And I just tell the little kid, no, no, you can't. You don't come up here, I, I come down here and tell But don't go to screaming and hollering and scaring the child. <laughs> I know, uh, since the spirit scared the crap out, almost the crap out of me. Because I came up there, you're not supposed to be out there. I did not know And seeing the way they hollered at you. Yeah, I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. 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 I wasn't for real. Yeah. Huh? What's the scripture for that first Samuel? No, first Samuel. Uh, <laughs> One, Preston, give me that scripture again, because 1 Samuel 21, 1 through 6. Yeah, 1 through 6. Yeah. I, I go ahead and read 1 through 6, because you're going to find out what, what, how David then went there, and they would start talking to the priest, because they were on the wrong, you know. Uh, but the thing that I'm trying to say is, is God justified. Because he did not strike them down. Because, first of all, they were doing God's will. And they was hungry. And this is where they could get something to eat. Now, there's another something here, y'all, that you could tie into this lesson. Uh, because Jesus uh, is dealing with his disciples in the field, right? Right. When this man come up here. Now, Jesus and his disciples are doing God's work. Right. So these the, the Pharisees, at this time, is acting like Saul, got them on the wrong. Did you get that? Jesus and his disciples are doing God's work right. when they went to the corn, in the field to get the corn. Okay. The Pharisees is on their trail, just like Saul had me on, what you call them trail? David. David, following them, looking for fault. Now, I'm just throwing that in. You know, you, you, can, you can relate this also to, as long as you're doing God's will, yeah. Yeah. you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. God gonna take care of you. Yeah. And, and certain things we might feel like it's sacred this or sacred that, uh, 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 but, but, but a lot of things that's sacred with, with us, we can't never say what God would not do. That's right. You know? Uh, because Sister Lee, now that was the time when, when I was coming up, if a child would have went into the pulpit, the parents would have whipped that child. Mm -hmm. That wasn't necessary to do that back then, because they just like, the child didn't know. they don't know. Right. She just explained to the kid, but don't whip them the way we, that's the way they did up. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm gonna tell you now, we got to make some changes. Yeah. You know. <laughs> They'll whip you and you won't never do it no more, but you can explain to somebody in a way just like she explained it to you. Mm -hmm. You probably ain't gonna appreciate that hollering that you like this. I should, didn't she? And it still is explaining to him. That would have yeah. come down. Yes, yeah. yeah. You yeah. Didn't, never knew what was happening. Never knew what was yeah. happening. Yeah, so. so. Yeah, you forgot that. Huh? Watch your time. Yeah. And he asked, and he actually went in there, and he didn't steal nothing. He asked the priest for it, and the priest voluntarily gave it to him. Now, that would have been enough of. A different thing if they would have been so hungry they went in there and just took the bread. Right. He asked them for five loaves of bread. You have to learn how to do things, my brothers and sisters, decent and in art. Uh, yeah, we're going to spend quite a bit of time. And he went into the house of the God. 
and did take and eat the shilbread and gave unto them that were with him, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest alone. Now you see what the scripture said? It wasn't even lawful for them to do that. Uh, but God allowed it to happen. First of all, let me, let's not forget David was being obedient to God. Because at this point, God had made him king. He was so obedient to, to God that he had a chance to kill Saul. Yeah. But he said, no, God said, I'm not to put my hand on the anointed one. And long as you do what God tell you to do, you, you get some privilege. Now, I'm not saying we get the okay to just go, and go against what's right and wrong. Right. But let's look at this lesson. Uh, they did everything decent and order, and he said it was just for the priest, but because of the circumstance. And never keep in mind, David was being obedient to God that put him in the situation that he's in. Right. Just like I was saying, uh, Deacon Newman, uh, when I went to his, uh, uh, one of his uh, karate programs, and he, the kids got out there, and, and they know karate, and after they did all that they had to do then, he called them all in a circle. And he got out and prayed with all of them. And they were saying that you can't do this in the school no more. Yeah. But I dare you to get right with God. And God wanted him to get out and to pray to show everybody else, this is what y'all ought to be doing with these children. Mm -hmm. And God protected him because it was several years after that before you had that incident. Mm -hmm. And to me, I was amazed to see that. Mm -hmm. And I was thankful to see one of the members of our church bold enough to do that. And then nobody around there mess with him. Uh, let's, let's move on because we done lost some valuable time. Verse 5. And he said unto them that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath. Look what he said. And he said unto them, who is he? That the Son of Man. Now he's called himself the Son of Man. Now, they, they, they looked at him as the Son of Man, but if you know when he's talking about the Son of Man, he, he's talking about himself as Jesus. Mm -hmm. Is also Lord of the Sabbath. The Son of Man, in this expression, he is explaining who he is to them. I am Lord over the Sabbath day. The Sabbath days are not, it's not over Jesus. Jesus is Lord over. Don't put nothing above Jesus. No rule, no regulation, no law. You can't put anything over Jesus. He says, I am Lord over the, in other words, I'm greater than the Sabbath. They, they didn't know that the one that you're talking about, the one that you're talking about, breaking, he's greater, he is. Lord have mercy. <laughs> I hope y'all can see what I see. Yeah. But these Pharisees, who's supposed to be so educated, yeah. he's really making them boys look bad, y'all. Mm -hmm. And let me tell y'all something. With Phariseeism in the church, they make themselves look bad. Yeah, that's right. Phariseeism in the church. And a real Christian knows when he sees Phariseeism. Mm -hmm. That's somebody who wants everybody else to, 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 to the law. And all this, they want you to obey the law. Yeah, but it's not for them to obey the law. Do y'all know one of the greatest events that happened, pulled a cover from over those Pharisees? Is when they brought the lady to Jesus. Yeah. And they come in here telling Jesus, we caught her in the very act. And here she is. Now, if you caught her, what was she in there? Uh, with a man gun or something? Yeah. It take two to do what she was doing. Mm -hmm. Now, if you telling the truth and you caught her in the bed, first of all, how did you know where she was? Ain't that the truth? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Sister Turner. Why were you there in the first place? And then second, where is the man? Yeah. Okay. Because the man is the head. Right. But you're going to bring the woman in here because you're trying to find fault with her. If you're going to handle the law, handle it. But they cannot handle the law. And, they were, and when Jesus started writing, there ain't no telling what he was writing. 
But I, the day you was over there at the same place. <laughs> Now, we don't know what he was writing. <laughs> but ever what he was writing now, and, and then the, and the main thing he told them was this, the first one of you all, <laughs> without no sin. Right. And that's why we got to be careful <laughs> judging other people. That's right. See, the first one, when I, and, and when he said that, you heard the rock fall. <laughs> you know, but here they bringing him here, so they done made themselves look bad. And just live right. Because God's going to take care of those that are righteous, those that are living right. And, and let me tell you something. Now, here they are. Thank God that they didn't know who they are. But these lessons are to let us know that Jesus is greater than any self. And when God, uh, uh, Genesis, God made man before he made the self. Then he made God made man. Then God made the Sabbath, right? That man may honor him and that use the seventh day to rest. Now, why, why are you trying to go with that? They put so much holiness on, on the Sabbath day. And like, you, 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 it, it, it's so, how would I say, sacred. You know, but what was simply behind the Sabbath day? Do you know man will work himself to death just to possess materialistic things? Right. Man, if you can put a man on a job and they say, look, you can work 12 hours a day, mm -hmm. seven days a week. Mm -hmm. There's some, there some men that I've known because I worked into the machine shop. When those gas prices get so high like this, and you're a machinist, and you're dealing with all, all well drilling equipment, there's no limit on how many hours you can work in those machine shops. Mm -hmm. And they have some time like that, that you can work two or three months, seven days a week, 12 hours a day. That was men lost their wives. You know why? Yeah, that's yeah. all they were doing, is working. And go back home and go to sleep. You got a woman, you got to show your wife some love. Yeah. You got to do something for your children. You just can't work, 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 and don't take care of your wife, don't take care of your children. The woman get tired of that. All you do is working and coming home, going to sleep, going loud. Yeah. Thank you. And, you, and when you work so long like that, your attitude get bad. Yeah. So God himself, I know I'm going to make this man, so I'm going to give him a Sabbath day because God made everything, it made man in the sixth and on the seventh day, God made the Sabbath and said, God rested. Did God need any rest? He had man in mind because he know man will work himself to death. So I'm going to give him a day to rest. And I also let it be a day that you acknowledge me for all I gave you in the sixth day. Now they're trying to make the Sabbath day more than it really is in dealing with the one who's much higher than the seventh day. That he's doing something so cruel on the Sabbath day, and all he was doing was hungry and got him something to eat. This is how this kind of came about. Verse 6, and it came to pass also on another Sabbath. Here they are again. Okay, y'all, y'all stick with me right here. And it came to pass also on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught. And there was a man who right hand was with him. Look at verse 7. And the scribes and the Pharisees watched him. Yes. Now, it's two things I want to bring out right quickly before I go anywhere. Now, he was out in a field. Yeah. <laughs> Plucking some corn because he was hungry. Mm -hmm. And they looking for some fault. And here they trying to find some fault in him. And here, all he's doing out there is, like the law say you can pluck it and eat it because they was hungry. Mm -hmm. Now, this is not in church. Okay. This is on our side. Now, we find on another Sabbath where he's in the church, and here they are in here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the same attitude. Yeah. Watching him out there looking to find some fault. Now, here they're in the church looking for him. 
Did you get it, Sister Richmond? While he was out there doing God's will on the hot side of the church. Mm -hmm. They're looking. They're trying to find fault. Now he is in the Lord house. Mm -hmm. right. And here they are still looking for some fault, not recognizing who he is. <coughs> what did it say? And the Pharisee watched him. It's different between watching and listening to him and watching him for, because he's getting ready to do something that only the Son of God could do this. Whether he would heal on a Sabbath day that they might find an accusation to give him. Now, let's go back to what we read on the Sabbath day. We read what you were not to do on the Sabbath day. Did it say you couldn't heal anybody on the Sabbath? It said you don't want to do what? Work. Now, do they call this working? <coughs> they get so confused, they don't know right from wrong anymore. Sister Rispel, we got that in our churches today. He's getting ready to go in here and do a good deal, and here they are. If, if they had their head clean right and know how, why they go, they ain't had no business in the, in, 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 in the uh, uh, Saint synagogue with this kind of attitude, no way. Right. You go to the synagogue and worship God. They going in there watching Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. That is right there in the scripture. And their mind is already made up while we're going here. Right. We, we're going here to see whether, uh, what he's going to do on the Sabbath day. That they might find an accusation against him. Mm -hmm. Two different places. Two different Sabbaths. First one was on the outside of the church. Second one is on the inside of the church, in the synagogue. Same problem. These professionals of the law enforcing the rules of the law. That's what they they want to make somebody they want to make somebody else live by them. But they're not living by them. Thinking there's nothing about rules and regulations not according to the words, but their own opinion and their own interpretation of the law. Because we done found out both of these instances, nothing is in the law Jesus was doing wrong according because the law said you don't labor. You don't want your man servant. You don't want your, you don't want your wife. You don't want your children. You don't want your maid servant. And if you got a visitor that's visiting you, you don't even work him. This is what the law say. And all this other stuff, this is their man-made laws. Mm -hmm. And here he is, Gary. It ain't said that you can't heal a man that needs healing on the Sabbath day. They're trying to enforce laws that they have come up with. Here they're in the synagogue looking for a fault. Coming in God's house. Supposed to be the worship. And when you come to the, the Lord's house, there's another thing that you ought to do before you come to the Lord's house on how to worship him. Do we come in here to worship him any kind of way? Jesus said, when you worship my father, you need to worship him how? In spirit and in truth. No spirit here is no truth in what they were doing. And here they call themselves enforcing the law. Verse 7, clearly state that they came that they might find accusation against him, against who? Jesus. Who is the law. Phariseeism. And if we're not careful, man, that stuff will get, we'll be doing the same thing today. Uh, Deacon Newman. Come here to, to worship God. I come here to praise God. I come here to thank God. Amen. Because he's been so good to me. And in spite of all this mess going on in this world, yeah. God is still good. God is still watching over God. still protecting us. I got a picket fence around my house. That picket fence can't protect my house. Do you know who really protected my house? God is. Get you a pit book, a rock wall. I had a neighbor, Reverend Rispin, had a rock wall. And he was a mean rock wall. Guess what happened one day? Somebody stole a rock wall. <laughs> that might sound funny, but that is the truth. The lady was mad, man. Somebody stole my rock wall. There's some people here, man, they're professional in everything because 
You got some people, professional people know how to go up and approach that dog. I don't care how mean he is. Verse what? Eight. But he knew that, oh Lord, have mercy. Here they are with all this scheming, all this planning, all this following him. But he knew their thought and said to the man which had the withered hand. And let, let me tell y'all something else. When you're going to do something for God, don't let nobody stop you from doing it. Don't no, let nobody throw you off track. With all the way they was acting, Jesus ignored that. He knew what he was going in there to do. Look what he said here. But he knew that thought and said to the man which had the withered hand, rise up. He's not focusing on them. He's not angry at them. I know who I am and I know what I can do. Yeah. Tell him, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood up. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Lord have mercy. Is it lawful on the Sabbath day to do good? or to do evil, to save life or destroy life. Jesus was there to save a man's life. They there to destroy somebody. They there for the wrong reason. Even Jesus now teaching now, why is Jesus doing all of this? Why is this so important to Jesus? Because his disciples are there. And he wants his disciples to learn how I help do handle these situations. I'm not going to let these men get under my skin. i got something to do. I'm going here to heal this man. And I want you all to see how I'm handling this. Uh, some quiet member, you can go up there to quiet. You can let something mess you up so bad, you, you, you can't quiet sing. Vicky, you ever had something go so bad, you come in here to do devotion service, you can't pray right. Thinking, Reverend Joe, somebody could do something so bad, you can't preach right. Yes, sir. Reverend Risper. And if y'all not careful, sometimes this stuff does have an effect on us. Yeah. But you better get yourself together and know what you're coming here to do and do it for the Lord. And here Jesus told this man to stand up, rise up and stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood up. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath day to do good? If we ought to be doing good every day. And especially on the Sabbath day. Yeah. But every day we ought to do good. Yeah. Or to do evil. To save lives or to destroy lives. Our job is to save lives. Because we are under the supervision of the Savior. The one that came into the world to save us. Now once he saved us, did he save us to just stay saved by ourselves? Yeah. Somebody help me with that. He saved us to do what? Save, save others. And this is what Jesus was going here to save. But these men coming behind him want to destroy people. Want to stone somebody to death. Because they're not living by the law. And who are not really living by the law? They are. And they, their hearts is, is evil. Uh, uh, uh. And looking around about them all. Oh, and he said unto the man, stretch forth thy hand. And he did so. And his hand was restored, whole, as the other. Now, another thing, with all of this tension in the house, people can feel tension, whether y'all know it or not. Now, if you got somebody around here, and let me tell y'all, it's dangerous. It's dangerous when you come to the Lord house. And you coming in here with the wrong attitude. Yeah. Wow. Jesus preached the whole fifth chapter dealing with your attitude. Mm -hmm. Because you come in here with a bad attitude, somebody will feel it, somebody will see that. Yeah. And you could hinder somebody. Else. Yeah. We better be careful about these bad attitudes. Mm -hmm. Because uh, 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 um, it could have affected this man in a way that it could have hindered whether he was going to listen to Jesus or not or listen to the group. But thank God he obeyed Jesus. And that's what we all have to do. You obey Jesus. Stop worrying about people. Obey Jesus. This man stood up with all his tension in the house. And when he stood up and obeyed Jesus, Jesus stretched with his hand 
and did so, and the hand was restored whole as the other. Thank God. Yes, and what got this man's hand restored was him being obedient to God, him keeping his eye on Jesus. Yes, and when he did that, he was made right again. And our church service ought to be. Do you know what the church really is called? Hospital. Thank said I lied, Sister Porter. Hospital. This is supposed to be a hospital. Yeah. This is supposed to be a place for the sick people to come yeah. and get made well. Isn't that what Jesus did to this man? This is in a hospital. But we think everybody, got, you got to come here like you're already a saint. You know what the man said over there on, on that program we had? He said, you can't clean a fish before you catch him. That is true. <laughs> you know? Lord, have mercy. So, so, so the man obeyed Jesus uh, and, and restored him. Now, we do know what the reason for all type of sickness. Now, it is sin. Now, but remember what the Bible tells us because when the man was blind, they asked him, who sinned? Who sinned? It doesn't necessarily mean that a person's sin is the reason something bad, bad happened to him, but sin is what caused it. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was dealing with a situation, uh, what do they call it, when a child is born, a certain type of way, what do they call that thing? Premature? Yes, the syndrome. syndrome. And uh, uh, this, this child was, was born like that, and it was a guy on my job. This, he, he really had a good heart. Now, he wasn't in church, but he had a good heart. And he said, you're a preacher, right? And I said, yeah. He said, well, you, can you explain to me, if, if there is a God, now, why would God let a child be born like that? And I told him, I said, now, because he wanted to talk to the parents, and I said, I'm going to explain this to you, but make sure you understand what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I said, what caused thing to be born, I mean children be born like this, uh, cancer to little children and all this stuff, it's because of sin. But I said, now I'm telling you, now that does not mean that their parents sin. It's because we're living in a world of sin. And because we're in a world of sin, these things happen. Not necessarily because the parents, not necessarily because it was sin in your life, just sin itself. See? And this is what caused this man, I'm not saying this man's hand was withered because he sinned, but sin is the reason behind any sickness. Right. Not necessarily that I, when I did something wrong. It's just a sin world we're living in. And things going to happen. And things happen in this world because we're in a sin world. And we're not exempt from the sins of this world. But even though when something happens like that, God is still with us. Amen. And what not, a lot of people don't know that child is born with those syndrome. It's, now this is me saying this and I believe this with my heart, Reverend Joe. That child already got a place in heaven. Because there's certain things he don't know better to do. He might not know right from wrong. Because he's not a normal child. And if God made him, I'm going to get me somebody in heaven if I have to use a child like this. No fault in him. And I tried to explain this to this guy. Now go and tell them that sin caused it. Not the mama, not the dad. And I asked him, do you understand? He said, not really. Why? Because he had never been in no church. Right. And this all sound fooling to them. But we know better. Y'all don't know how blessed we are. We can understand God and the way the world, the way things happen in this world. And another thing we're going to happen, if the church don't get right, we're going to end up with a president we don't want. Okay. <laughs> Jesus came to restore the man from his, from his broken word. Not just the Sabbath. We should do good seven days a week. And especially when we come to the Lord's house, we ought to strive to be on our best behavior. Because we're coming in the presence of God. And just like God told Moses, I found it on that backside of that devil. He said, Moses, get out of your shoes. Because you're standing on some holy ground. A lot of people just think this is a church is a building with four walls around. I was here when they dedicated the, this, this house unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. This is the, what we call the Lord house. Mm -hmm. And if it's the Lord house, we ought to treat it like it's. Right. Now, the Lord house not going to save you. Right. You know, but we still ought to treat it. And if you write with God, you're going to treat this like it's the Lord house. Mm -hmm. 
And them old saints come up there, that when they went to church, that's the way they treated. We'll come in here and a fight will break out in a New York minute. Cursing people and lying on people and doing everything else. And want to know why the world don't respect the church. There's a reason why the world don't respect the church. Because we don't respect it. And Lord has the last one. And they were filled with madness. Lord have mercy. Hear these men being in the presence of Jesus Christ. Seeing a perfect man. Seeing God himself in the form of a man. And they following him all this time and filled with madness. And not only was they mad, but look what, what else they did. And commune one with the other what they might do to Jesus. My brother, my sister, if you want to do, let me, let, let me say it like this. If nobody has never did anything to you to upset you in the church, I wonder about you. Maybe there's a reason why nobody not doing anything to upset you. Maybe you're doing Satan work. Because once you start doing God's work, Satan going to come after you. There was no reason for these men to be in the head of mind. Said, what Jesus, the whole story we had read, Jesus didn't do anything wrong. And even if they thought it was wrong what he was doing out there, plucking them some corn to eat it, by their misinterpretation of the scripture, but then when they see a man with a withered hand, you all. <laughs> Sister Lee, if you see a man with his hand withered, his hand out, and then somebody's going to come in here and fix his hand. That's something that everybody ought to do. What? Just rejoice. And be happy about it. When Jesus fixed the man's hand, they were filled with what? Madness. And not only were they filled with madness, then they got to get, we're going to take him out. I hope this lesson means something to y'all like it does to me. We need to get our act together. We need to know that we are here to help people. And it's not about us. Yeah. Just like Jesus came to this world because sin was so bold in the land. Mm -hmm. He came to straighten things out. And these men, he did all this in front of his disciples. That they could see how he worked. Because one day he's going to leave off the scene. Because what did he tell them? Your work is greater than mine. Mm -hmm. Now when he said that work, they weren't going to do any greater work than Jesus was. But he was saying, you got more range. Yeah, right. It was limited on how far Jesus could go. But I want you to take this Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Samaria, and the what? Utmost parts of the world. Going you there for teaching and baptizing. And teaching me to make disciples out of men and women, boys and girls. That's right. We're not so concerned about teaching people. We want to start judging people. You got to do this. No, stop all of that nonsense. Our responsibility is to get them to Jesus Christ. Come in and be part of God's royal family, his royal priesthood. And never forget, I was once lost in sin. But I thank God that I was blind. But now I can see. And I thank God. And I thank God, Big Newman, he didn't take me down while I was out there in that world, caught myself doing my own thing. And another thing about this, y'all know what? God knows when he's going to turn somebody around. Yeah. And I don't care what you do out there in that world. If God got you marked, nobody's not going to take you out of nowhere. And to God's own time, he's going to bring you in to, to his family. And he's going to bring you in here to work. And that's what we got to realize. God brings people into the sanctuary to be part of our church to put those people to work. We can't do everything. Let some new people come in and do things. This is a great lesson. Healing on the Sabbath. This lesson was broken up to two parts. It was Jesus showed that he was Lord of the Sabbath. And he also showed people to do good on the Sabbath. The Sabbath. Mm -hmm. he, he was the Lord of the Sabbath when he was out there breaking the cone. 
And then he was doing good on the Sabbath when he come in there and healed the man. And you always had someone following him, always looking for excuses. I mean, looking for fault. What was going on back then is going on now. Until God called his church, Satan's going to steadily be after the church. Remember Joe about reading one of my books last week when I found out that Sony John the Baptist come into the world. Satan was all right. Because God had been, they hadn't heard from God for 400 years. So man was all right, just living the way they want to. But when John the Baptist came into this world and started preaching one sermon, I want you to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. And repent, you need to check where you got the chain. Yeah. Because God is getting ready to send his son in his word. So what was getting ready? You getting ready to set up a spiritual warfare mm -hmm. against the world and against the one that Jesus was sitting into this world. The war started when John started preaching repent. And they got more violent. And a political man had John head took off. But it didn't stop nothing because he kept saying that I got to decrease because there's one coming. Yes. And I'm not even worthy to stoop down. And, and Luke's an issue. And Jesus came and proved who he was. Yeah. Defeated Satan. Mm -hmm. Because death was reigning. Mm -hmm. Hit Satan in the head. Satan... Satan got a blow in, 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 in the Garden of Eden. Yeah, yeah. But he got a knot put on his head on resurrection morning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are on the winning team, you all. Yeah, yeah. We are the winners. Mm -hmm. And we need to start conducting ourselves and carrying ourselves. And I don't care what this world throws at us, God's going to take care of us. Why? Because he got something to do. We got a job to do. Yeah. The same thing Jesus was doing here. Being obedient to his goal. Caring about people. And when people misunderstand the scripture, we ought to know the scripture. We're not in this thing to be trying to argue and embarrass nobody. Just stand for the scripture. And watch what God does in your life. It's going to end our lesson tonight. Let us bow our heads in a moment of prayer. Turn to God our Father, the Father of our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you for this lesson thank you, Lord. on tonight. Uh, things happen in this lesson that help us to be mindful of. As long as we're doing your will, Satan's going to be steady on our trail oh, yes. looking for fault. Yes. But help us to be like your son Jesus. Yes. He knew right from wrong. And he did right and I know this lesson is surrounded by the Sabbath day. And help us to realize that Jesus is Lord of the Sabbath day. But we do have obligation on the Sabbath day to come together and praise your holy and your righteous name. And Father, when people come, as Sister Porter said, this is a hospital. People are sick. People are hurting, people are lame when they come to your house. Help us to be about your business, Lord. Help it to be a place where they could come and we could get them to the Savior of this world. Oh, Father God, it was such a, a great lesson. And then, Lord, I pray that that will reveal to us if we get caught up like these Pharisees on the wrong road that you would Deacon Turner used to say all the time, turn us around, Lord, and put us on the right road. Because, Lord, we see the condition that the world is in. And we thank you that you watched over us in our foolishness, protected us, because we could have got taken out of this world in our foolish ways, in many different ways. But, Lord, you saved us. Turn us around. Now we're part of your royal family. We want to be used by you. you. Uh, not to get no glory for our own self. You've given us enough glory. Just open us, 
opening our blinded eyes that we can now see. And Father, when we get tried, help us to stand for what's right. That we might draw people <coughs> unto thee. Because this world, it need help, Lord, like it never needed before. We want to be your instrument. Help us to be concerned. Just as certain as Jesus was, he was doing all of this in the presence of his disciples that they could learn. They could learn how to conduct themselves. They could stay humble and meek and not let anyone just make them angry and want to get off the job. Oh, we just thank you for this lesson. Now, Father, we come tonight praying for the sick and the shut-in. Still praying for Mother Webster, Sister Gaston, and the rest of the sick families. Sister Covert. And then, Lord, I come praying for my brother, uh, my baby brother, who was admitted into the hospital on last night. One thing we know for sure, he know you, Lord. We know you're able to heal him of his sickness. Once you heal him, Lord, and he get back to being out about his daily life, then we use that opportunity to tell the world what you've done for him. Oh, Father God, we just thank you again on tonight. Thank you for those that came out. Thank you for the ones that's online. Mm -hmm. The blessing that we are asking tonight. We ask them in the name of the one that this lesson was all about. That's your son, who is our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, and we thank you. That's going to end our lesson on tonight. We're going to open up.